Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. Here on Let's Talk Ray Bradbury, I have been working through another collection of Ray Bradbury short stories, reading them, reviewing them, and discussing them here with you on our channel. Today's story is The Long Rain from 1950. Uh, this is, a, is number story 25 in the collection, The Stories of Ray Bradbury, if you are following along with me. Uh, synopsis, uh, four soldiers have crash landed their rocket on Venus. Uh, Venus apparently does seem to have some settlements, some human settlements. It's not entirely clear what they're doing there, uh, but when we meet them, they're out in the rain. They have been walking for days. Uh, it is a a rainy planet, an endlessly rainy planet. Um, no visible sun, it just constantly rains and storms and it's beginning to wear on their psyches. They're trying to reach a type of sanctuary known as a sun dome. These are man-made domes with an artificial sun inside, dry conditions basically to uh, block out the outside conditions and give you some reprieve from all that constant sensory overload of the drip, drip, drip of rain never ending on you. Uh, as they're traveling, they first accidentally travel in a circle and find themselves back at their rocket. Um, no other choice, they set out again. And as they do this, uh, the members of the crew begin to slowly go mad. Um, uh, one, in fact, actually um, shoots himself, and another one insists on being left behind. And eventually it comes down to it's just the lieutenant, um, the leader of this group, and he... Um, he sees the next sun dome in the distance. Um, uh, the previous one they'd reached uh, had been breached and had been abandoned, possibly by um, underwater um, dwelling uh, Venusians, I guess you'd call them, uh, who had come up and attacked and didn't like people, but they did this rarely. They don't know. Um, but he finds himself at this next sun dome, um, and inside uh, he seems to find uh, people, um, dry conditions, food, water, a place to rest. and uh, Or does he? Um, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that he finds it. I think he may have gone mad, but it's really hard to tell from just the way um, Bradbury sort of leaves it semi-ambiguous. I, I like the idea that he didn't actually find it, and he's probably just standing there in the rain, um, <laughs> um, uh, grinning like a fool until he dies. Uh, but yeah, um, the driving force of this story is sort of... Um, sensory, sensory overload. It's sort of like um, uh, the um, the uh, drip, drip, drip of water on you in the supposed uh, Chinese water torture where the one drip that you keep waiting for um, eventually drives you mad. But in this case, it's constant, uh, endless rain, dripping, never dry, um, never... Every point of your body is constantly being touched by something and you just sort of long for um, the reprieve of... Um, of less sensation. Um, I have to imagine it's somewhat like um, what maybe some people go through um, certain types of um, autism and and disorders where you have trouble um, with overstimulation. It definitely sort of speaks to me in, in that kind of way. Um, you know, also I would say it's, it's a little bit of um, seasonal affect disorder, disorder cranked up to 11. I mean, I know um, I'm pretty sensitive to weather changes here and the long, the long cold winters wear on you and they really do get your mood down and um, there's a bit of that tangled up with this as well. The um, story has next to nothing in the way of character. There are some character names, um, I think Simmons was one of them, um, but there's really... Um, nothing in the way of character development, which is I, I think is by design here. I um, mean, it's a short story, a little bit longer than some of the short stories that I've been reading in this collection. Um, but really, here um, I think that makes sense because it's it's sort of in keeping with that theme of uh, the sensory overload. And um, if you got too deep into the characters, um, you would sort of create. Um, a little bit of distraction for the reader. Instead, I think the reader is, is sort of bombarded um, by this these sensory um, sensations that the same that the characters themselves are feeling. And and I also feel like it's sort of speaks to the idea that these people are being so bombarded by these, these sensations that even they can't think. So why should we be able to think either as readers? Um, without the character, though, I mean. It's still a great story. Um, it has uh, just incredible mood and atmosphere going for it. Um, this sort of this dark, endlessly rainy 
um, setting and uh, he describes the jungle and everything else as being sort of bleached out white because um, with so much water basically the and without sun to create chlorophyll the um, uh, the rain sort of bleaches and everything and the color runs out of things and sort of I sort of imagine um, a bad a bad LSD trip or you know some some hippie thing where um, color is running away um, from these characters as they sort of go on this bad trip um, I did like this little um, thing that it mentioned about um, if, if you sat down or lay down, uh, the fast-growing vegetation and fungus is out of the ground will sort of grow up and um, sort of entomb you, encase you. Um, and it reminds me very much of uh, James Cameron's Avatar um, at the end there where uh, they're, they're trying to switch bodies and, and sort of the, the filaments sort of come up and glowing and, and encase, um, encase the character. Um, it sort of reminds me of that as well. But yeah, um, a really excellent little story. Uh, the Long Rain from 1950. Story number of 25 of 100 in the stories of Ray Bradbury. I think that makes this the... 100 and 125th story we've reviewed here on Let's Talk um, from Ray Bradbury. So we're on our way to 200. I uh, hope you will subscribe and join us on that journey. But until next time, see you later.